prenuptial agreements in England and Wales have been given far more clout in the divorce cases after a landmark ruling in the Supreme Court. A German heiress, Katrin Radmacher, has won a long legal battle with her former husband over her £100 million fortune. Until now, prenuptial contracts where couples agree how they divide their assets if they split up have not been binding. Our legal affairs analyst, analyst Clive Coleman reports. Catherine Radmacher emerges from court following a landmark decision. Today the Supreme Court ruled that prenuptial agreements are binding in English law if they're fair. Catherine is delighted that Britain has upheld fairness. Catherine and her ex-husband had promised each other that if anything went wrong between them, they wouldn't make financial claims against each other. It was meant to be a marriage for love, not for money. Catherine Radmacher and her ex-husband Nicholas Granatino signed their prenup in Germany, but they married and divorced in the UK. Miss Radmacher has an estimated fortune of £100 million, and her ex-husband had previously been awarded £5.6 million. That was dramatically reduced by the Court of Appeal, and Mr Granatino wanted it restored. But is it fair on the financially weaker party in a divorce, which is normally the wife? Prenups aren't just for the rich. People entering second marriages are increasingly keen to try and ring-fence part of their wealth in case the marriage fails. After today's landmark ruling, that's going to be a lot easier. In 2008, Susan Crossley was forced to abandon a settlement claim after a judge gave strong weight to a prenup between her and her wealthy fourth husband, Stuart Crossley. He says husbands need the protection of a prenup. There's a lot of men who would very willingly and happily marry their partner, but are terrified of doing so in case the partner has an ulterior motive. In 2012, the Law Commission is due to report on whether prenups should be binding. Until then, couples freely entering into these agreements will be legally bound. Clive Coleman, BBC News, at the Supreme Court.